you say that、uh, God is like I ask you one time, like、uh, nothing. Like Buddha said, emptiness or nothing, none. So I try to imagine that the、uh, water flowing after this, but it's gone, then I'm going back to the little tiny water or something, you know, then floating in the air or water, sky or something. Nothing to be done, I think, that way. What? You, you don't understand? No, what is the question? Yeah.、Uh, Like you said,、uh, to connection between God and my own self. So then, like I said, that、uh, emptiness is、uh, like a Buddha. I mean, well,、uh, nothing, nothing, emptiness, nothing, you call God or something, you know? So yeah, I can tell you the Buddha, the Buddha was very conscious and was. Perfectly correct in saying that a state of nothingness enables a human being to connect with higher energy in the universe. What keeps us from connecting is ego, personality, tension, fear, insecurity, all of these different you know, elements that build up inside of people and block them. But once we learn how to transform all of that stuff into chi, into an open heart, into love, you understand? And you can only do that transformation by becoming closer and closer to a state of nothingness in yourself. I mean, Rudy always used to say, less is more, and it's true. The less there is of us involved, You know,、uh, the more spiritual energy can flow through us. So, we, by the very nature of our personalities and you know, all the things we fear and insecurities and et cetera, you know, we keep that energy, we dam up the flow of that energy. We're full of ourselves and we don't have any room, but we have maybe 10% room inside ourselves for spirit to flow. Otherwise, we wouldn't even be alive. So, the Buddha, you know, look, an extraordinary being who, who attained the state of nothingness. Yes. And that nothingness allows. Spirit to flow, it allows creativity to flow, all creativity to flow. We are no longer guided by the intellect. We have surrendered in enough depth that we've transformed all of these obstructions into Shakti, into energy that is developing a chakra system, making room for spirit to flow through us and guide our lives. I mean, I honestly don't know a better way to live. First of all, it gets rid of all the fear inside a human being. It enables one to make choices without being afraid to make choices. It enables one to step into the unknown without being afraid to step into the unknown. It enables one to be non judgmental, forgiving. It enables one to function here to get a spiritual life just on the highest level of what it means to be a human being. And to me, that's extraordinary. You know, that's an accomplishment that can take a thousand lifetimes for a soul to accomplish that. And what supposedly we're all here to do is to accomplish that, is to train ourselves. We need training, we need to learn how to do it. And if we don't learn how to do it, you know, and if we accept you know, ways and means of not learning how to do it, then we have to accept that that's our lives. You know, and we have to be grateful for whatever it is that's come into our lives. But I know when I was younger and I had so many of those problems, I knew I had to learn how to transform them into nothingness. 
and it never stopped my life from happening because once you have a state, that kind of state in you, then that energy flow and it creates a miraculous life. A life that I could have never created for myself. God, spirit, higher energy created for me. That was amazing, you know? So yes, I am in absolute agreement with the Buddha. I bow to the Buddha, kiss the Buddha's foot, because that state of nothingness is the key to any kind of spiritual life. I think we need a lot of courage. God, I don't know, God's courage to do, to... to you don't to, need a lot of courage. You need a lot of need. What? Need? to do it. And if you need to do that, it'll give you the courage to do it. It's not, well, I need courage, you know? Courage grows out of the need to do it, that hunger in yourself. Yes. Then you get the guts to do it. I mean, look at your kind of music you do in dancing and art. You know, it's your need to do it that gives you the courage to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I first met you and I went to that concert you gave, I was astonishing to me. And it's truly the need. And I, even at that point in my life, I didn't understand this. I understand it now because I burned through so many of my predilections about what spiritual life is to get to a, a sense of simplicity of nothingness of really tapping that need and letting that need Produce for me what God wants it to produce. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? You would like to ask. The primary need should be to have a spiritual life. And most people, the primary need has to do with material existence. And that's easier because it's tangible, you know? Spiritual life is intangible. It comes from a high level of more abstract level of consciousness. But, you know, once you tune into it, it creates the tangible around you. Because everything around us is a manifestation of God. It's a manifestation of spirit. Does anyone else have a question for everyone to ask? Okay, just one more thing. I spoke earlier about that blog that I'm doing. I think a blog is a strange word <laughs> for writing these kind of things, but that's what they call it, and that's what we'll refer to. Uh, you know, uh, it, something will be posted every Sunday. I mean, Bob already has a bunch of things to post, so, and then I have to write some more. But something will be posted every Sunday. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask?
Sure. Yes. What um, does conflict come into our lives to teach? You're static on the radio. I can't understand. Um, it's the internet. What does conflict teach us? I don't understand what you're saying, so it's like static. He said, what does conflict teach us? What does conflict teach her? Teach us. Oh, okay. What does conflict teach us? A great deal. <laughs> Look, it's nonstop in life. It goes on all the time. Every time we make a decision, there's going to be conflict. Every time we interact with other people, there's going to be kind of conflict. Conflict is a byproduct of the manifestation of the mind's energy. And most things in life are a manifestation of human projection. You know, they use the energy of spirit and project things into life. And these things create conflict. You know, the greatest thing to learn in conflict, you know, is that there's, you know, there's a, that there's, that you can learn from both sides of the conflict. You learn that, you know, that there is no right or wrong. It is just the mind and people's opinions that create the conflict. And if you learn, you know, I mean, one of the things I do in my own life when there is conflict, what is this person saying to me? What is that person saying to me? What kind of truths can I extract from both sides of the conflict? And how can one create harmony from conflict? You know, and that can only be created by transforming the conflict inside oneself into an open heart. There's no conflict in an open heart. There's no conflict when the chakra, you know, below the navel, the third chakra, you know, is developed and chi is developed and there's harmony and balance there. There's no conflict when the mind is quiet. You understand there's only conflict when the emotions, the mind, the sexual energy, all of it gets together and creates an, a lunatic asylum inside of people. And it's all manufactured by, you know, energy that really is terrestrial. It's, it's earthly energy that manufactures all the conflict. So to me, you know, uh, there's enormous amounts to be learned from, you know, divergent opinions. And each side has something to teach. And if you learn from both sides of the conflict, you can eliminate the conflict. The problem is, is that people are righteous. Everybody is right. And that's why the conflict doesn't go away. But it's much more profound to listen to somebody than to lecture them. Learn something about what they're bringing you. And I think it's a very important way to live, you know? And then conflict serves a real purpose. It teaches us about divergent opinions and things that are in opposition to each other. And that it also teaches us there's no right or wrong. We can learn from both of them. And yes, there's been horrible crap that's gone on in the world, holocausts and atomic bombs that have gone off and all kinds of madness. But if the madness teaches us something about how to grow spiritually, we, you know, we can't prevent that madness. It happened already, but learn from it and certainly keep it from happening again. Problem is people don't learn anything. And everybody is right. And as long as everybody is right, there will be war on earth. Because frankly, you have 8 billion people, I say it all the time, they all perceive their own unique reality. 
and nobody else is going to fit into anybody else's reality. But everybody can listen to other people's reality and learn something and grow because of it and not be in conflict with it. And then maybe there would be a bit of harmony on the earth, you know? And I'm not saying this through innocence. I know horror has taken place on this planet, still taking place here. You know, horrible things that people do. But I think the most horrendous of all is that nobody listens to anybody else. Nobody learns how to become more of a human being because of what has happened how to get closer to God, how to have a spiritual life because of what has happened, how to transform myself so that those horrendous things don't happen again. Nobody learns. But in order to learn, people have to be open. They have to be open. They have to transform their inner self so they can listen to life instead of fight with life. Does anyone else have a question? I mean, we've all been around people that are right. I mean, probably one of the most horrible experiences in the world to spend your time around people that are right all the time, you know? I mean, Rudy even said to me, he said, I'd rather be, he'd rather be wrong, you know, than right. At least if he knows he's wrong, he can make up the difference. There's something to learn about himself. If he's right all the time, there's not, nowhere to go. You're a crystallized being, you're dead. You know, there's no room for growth. But I can't tell how many times I heard that from Rudy. He would rather be wrong all the time than right. Does anyone else have a question? Now, these are things that are an instant, you know, it's not, these are not things that can be instantly learned. These are things that are all manifest because a human being grows inside himself or herself. That's how these things manifest, these ways of living, these ways of looking at the world. It's not like, as I say, I can write this on a blackboard, you put it in a notebook and memorize it and think you're going to live this way. It doesn't work that way. It works because it evolves inside organically into a state of being that enables one to live that way. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, well, there'll be meditation on I think Monday, right? There'll be meditation on Wednesday. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. And again, I always end the class with God bless you. Thank you. You are my teacher. You are making it possible for me to grow and have a spiritual life. And God bless you all. I have enormous gratitude for these classes and for the presence of every single person. So bless you all. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Wednesday. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you.